Welcome to Civil War Digital Digest. I'm Will. Today we've got a real treat for you. No, it's not the salt pork. I know some people love it, some people don't. We've already done an episode on what to do with it, and today the episode is what a veteran said to do with it. Grove Seavey was a private in Company E of the 17th Michigan Infantry. He was a private for the entire war, served through the war, and were able, thanks to collector Bill Kristen, to find out a little bit about his life. He left a diary behind, and in his 1863 diary, there was a memoranda section, and he left us several recipes. One of them is what to do with salt pork. Let's take a second and listen to what his instructions to make pork are. Pork should be boiled three hours after soaking three hours. Change the water twice. When cold, cut in slices. All right, so it's gonna take us six hours to make it. This is definitely something to be done more in a fixed camp. Again, we talked about what to do with salt pork a couple of years ago in an episode. And the big thing we said was get the salt off the pork, get it soaked and then boil it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the piece that we have here. I've got a couple others prepped already in here. We're gonna do four men's rations in one day. The first thing we're gonna do with this is we're gonna take the salt and we're gonna scrape any excess we can off. Now, normally in our previous episode, we said, hey, cut the pork into smaller chunks. Well, let's do what Mr. CV said to do today, and that is we'll cut it up at the end. So now we're gonna take the chunk of salt pork straight out of the barrel, into the pot it goes. Now for interpretive sake at Historic Fort Wayne, we do have a temporary water source that works much like a period source. We're gonna go ahead and use that as our water source today. Let's get this stuff filled so we can start the three hours of soaking. We'll change the water twice and then we'll go to the fire and we'll put it on for three hours of boiling. Well, okay, our salt pork has gone ahead and soaked for three hours like Mr. CV recommends. We've gone ahead and changed the water three times and now it's time to cook it. So we're gonna bring it over here We've got our fire going. So as we put the pork on the fire, we find that our fire, since we don't have a way to raise the pot off of either by irons or by a hanger, we need to adjust the heat to the pot. So our fire actually has two areas. The area closest to me is what we're gonna cook on. We're looking for a moderate fire because we're gonna cook this for three hours. We don't want this a rolling boil. It'll just totally overcook the pork. So we're gonna keep a light simmer going once we get a boil. That'll happen over here where we keep the coals light on the far side of the fire, you see larger pieces that are cooking down, and I've got several pieces ready to support it and back it up. As the fire goes on for the three hours, we need to keep it going. We need to make coals. We'll, we'll make coals over here, drag them to the pot, and then we'll adjust what we need to keep that simmer and keep that light boil going for the entire three hours. We'll see how it goes. Now, we might run out of water as we boil down. Let's not do that. Always good when you're cooking long term and boiling things. If we need to get more water, we don't dump cold into here anymore. We'll put the cold in here, bring it up to a boil, and then add it. So I can see bubbles around the edge already starting. Let's watch this. This is going to take a couple, three hours, and we'll be back with you in a little bit. Right, so the salt pork is boiled for about an hour. We've checked it and we learned that we read something that wasn't totally clear in the recipe. Mr. CV says to change the water and boil for three hours. We think what he actually meant was to change the water while boiling, not while soaking. We soaked for three hours and didn't really see a huge difference in the water every time we changed it. When we stir here, we certainly see a scum coming to the top. We see salt coming off and that's leaching out and that's stuff we wanna get rid of. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna switch this water now that we've been going for an hour and get some fresh. Again, to remind, we had put the extra pot on to refill with. So we've got water boiling already ready to go. So let's go ahead and carefully make this switch. Now remember when you're doing this, we are dealing with boiling water and hot pans over a fire. We're gonna go ahead and get a little ways away from the fire where we can safely do this. And we're gonna use uh, pot holders or whatever you can get to make sure you're safe. And we're gonna carefully dump away from the fire and away from other people. 
and you can just see the scum pouring off out of this water. This is definitely stuff we want to get away from the salt pork to make a better quality meal for the people that we're, that we're cooking for. Now that we've drained the water, we'll come back to the fire. Let's use this chance to freshen up the fire. We can go ahead and pull some more coals under our area. Yep, that's warm enough. We'll get that on there. Now, again, being very careful for the heat, we will grab the refill pot and transfer more water in. All right, since that covers the pork, it's gonna come back to a boil real soon. We're gonna go ahead and watch it boil again. We'll change this one more time. For now, we're off to our water source to refill our pot and get it back on and warm it up again. We'll be back in a little bit. All right, so we're about two hours in. The pork continues to boil and cook and we continue to bring scum up to the top. It's time to switch it again. Our second pot is boiling, which means we're not gonna stop the cooking process, but rather keep it going. So let's go ahead and get this taken care of. With this being the last time that we need to change the water, we don't need to worry about this, but we need to get this back up to a boil and do the third hour of cooking. We'll watch it for a bit. Come on back in a little bit. Well, all right, it's been three hours. The salt pork has continued to boil and we see salt coming off it. Let's go ahead and take it out of the final water. And then Grove CV says that we should set it out, let it cool, and then cut it into slices. So first we're gonna decant the water off. We're gonna pull the pieces out, let them cool. Then we'll slice it up and see how we did in a little bit. So we've got most of the water out, but we need to get this pork cooling. We'll go ahead and take a fork and bring it out. All right, let's let that cool for a little bit. We'll come back, cut it up and see how we did. Well, welcome back. We've waited a little while. We've let the salt pork cool. The last thing we need to do that Grove CV tells us to do for making salt pork is once it's cooled, cut it into slices. Let's have a look here. And here we go, sliced up and ready to serve. Well, it's salt pork. We all know how bad salt pork can be when we first get it. Let's take that. Let's take a little bit of skin off the back edge and let's see how we did. Well, I know some of you have had salt pork in the past and it's terrible and you'll never touch it again. We talked about how to deal with it a while ago. This is really delicious. It brings me back to a time in experimental archaeology to the 145th anniversary of the Battle of Gettysburg, the At High Tide event. We were issued salt pork and did what we could with our fry pans to get it going. It was salty and terrible. We tried to use water to get it out and it was just horrible. A day later, there was some spare salt pork and some of the cooks at regimental headquarters had stewed it for a long time and it was some of the best food we'd ever had. We were hungry, but it was fantastic. This tastes more like that. Grove Seavey, Company E, 17th Michigan. His story out of his diary, how do you care for salt pork? Here's a veteran, here's a very edible meal, here's a connection to the Civil War. We'll see you next time.